we showed a real broad spectrum of my work. So one room would be a film, next room would be just one dress, mm -hmm. and then another room would be something else. Mm -hmm. And I think that this was really, I think that did a lot of good in a way to show my world. And that show then went to the Modern Museum in Tokyo, and then it's now in Istanbul Modern. So it's quite a, I think there was a lot of excitement around it. And it was a really fantastic opportunity for me to show everything that, you know, that I've developed throughout the years. I think it's to do with, uh, you, you know, I guess um, it's, just, it's just been the exposure. But really, um, I've been making films since the end of the 90s. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I, you know, it was very connected to my, my shows. They were really the extension of the shows. So, like I said, like all the characters you see in the film or in the show, they're really the same people for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... Maybe I don't know. Come in because the question, I guess, could also be addressed to the people invited to say to do these shows to us and to us. Yeah, and well, why don't you answer well, it? Well, I, I think it's <laughs> important because um, Andre's known you for a very long time. He's yeah. studied at St. Martin's more or less the same time. Remember, we've known each other for uh, a while, and she introduced me to Hussein 10 years ago or something. So, in a way, it's just happened. It's not, I think it's important to stress it's not part of a campaign. You know, it's not a sort of. Yeah. Um, advertising campaign or anything like this is this is work. Uh, Andre chose to show a few certain works in a certain way. With us, um, there are very interesting um, connections with a listen ethos and what listen gallery artists do. It's very much ideas based, but it's material, it's poetic, but also quite rigorous. And it's a very easy fit to, to do the show. So you know, I think it's it's a natural thing. It's not a forced thing, which I know you weren't implying, but it could. Well, actually, what I meant was less the cir uh, external circumstances of the show and more in terms of your own career, because you've said it's interrelated, but there are points, there are ebbs and flows, aren't there? And I wondered if you're talking about the fact that there's continuous themes through your work, is the production of a new body of work a departure? It, it, does it say something about what's happening in your fashion work that you choose? I mean, I know these things happen in parallel, but surely your enthusiasms change and you feel like right now it's time for a discrete body of work that I'd like to show in a gallery because of course work shown in a museum retrospective is well you can answer this yeah. is it different from showing a new body of work that you've you know created in a gallery as opposed to showing a presentation like a static presentation a fashion context or on a runway you know you although you say that there are themes and motifs that span across all of those things, you do conceive of them in a different way and it's with a different energy and with a different mm -hmm. language and kind of performance, I guess. I think that uh, definitely a gallery show um, um, is, is absolutely a different uh, scenario and setting. I think that, um, you know, in a way, um, it's sort of... I also consider the space, and it was important here, for instance, in our conversations with Greg, that we would use each zone differently uh, to create this sort of uh, almost a, a sort of disembodiment of the piece, mm. let's say. So one room would be the, 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 the sculpture, the other room would just be the voice, and then the orchestra and the full performance would be separate. I think that, um, I guess it's to do with the fact that, you know, I, I, you, you consider um, the frame around it. Like I said, I think gallery, galleries are frames for existing things. So if I was to present this idea, let's say as a live, like as a show uh, that's live, I think I would, again, reconsider how I'd do it. But I think the sources all come from the same place. I think the way they're manifested are, are different. Yeah. And I think it's to do with um, the fact that also in a gallery space, you can go and look at something close up. You, it's really up to you how long you spend around the piece, whereas a live event, I think, dictates how you suppose how you look at something because it's it's over in two seconds and you know and it's it's the spontaneity of it is the beauty in a way because things are how you control the atmosphere is not necessarily how you intend it to be always mm. so I think that uh, there is this sort of um, climatization let's say to the platform um, you know on which you 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 show so to push that point just a bit further what does this particular context to show this idea give you that nothing else can? Are you saying it's time? It's time and it's also a space to enjoy one piece in, its, in a very pure way. And the fact that you can walk around it mm -hmm. and it's, there's nothing else distracting you. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there is this sort of, for me, for instance, this show is like a jewelry box type of show where really, I mean, you go to a room, you just hear her voice 
You go to another room, it's, her sculpt it's the sculpture with her face, and downstairs is, again, divided. So it was that kind of, I, I think it's kind of a luxury, in a way, to have that space. Because so much, so much of what we see is digital these days, yeah. and if you are, you know, at a live event, you you see something or you don't see it, depending on where you're sat. So I think it's that. Um, I don't know. There's something uh, that felt luxurious to me. Well, it's, it's maybe a silly point to make to somebody that's a, a design, a fashion designer, so, who presumably is so concerned and interested by product. But actually, maybe it gives it more materiality if. Fashion is floating off more into complete imagery and virtuality, the extent that you might never even have any contact with the clothes that you're consuming online by looking. Yeah. Um, maybe this is much more rooted in the real exactly. world. Exactly, that's what I was saying about the digital world, that in a way, by seeing real objects, and I'm gravitating more towards making objects than actually just making films, because again, I think there's that kind of enjoyment of something material. Uh, because actually, um, I've made six films now, and every time, right from the beginning, since the early, early noughties, I would show the film and show the objects with it. And now I think that, in a way, the film is important, but it's not, the, the primary thing is really the, the objects, and the same for spring projects. We're showing the objects that are used as ingredients, but those ingredients have, have become the monuments, in a way. Mm. So I think it's, uh, you know, I'm going towards that for the moment, and again, also, I think um, a lot of people, um, there's a lot of film make. there are lots of filmmakers, and um, I think that what my, let's say my um, difference maybe is that I've always, I've evolved making things, but dressed is namely, but even in the other shows we've done, we've always had this sort of cross-disciplinary approach uh, with sculpture and dress and, you know, transformation and, you know, so in a way, it's, uh, I guess, I mean, this kind of a setting for someone like me is really a luxury and... Um, it comes out of the ideas that are most important. You know, you're saying uh, when you started your career, even as a student, you, you felt like an artist and you kind of chose fashion as a career. And um, even in your fashion shows, I haven't seen uh, many, but I remember very strongly before Minus Now at Sadler's Wells, and was it 2000? Fantastic uh, staging, incredible, incredibly coordinated performance with music and um, uh, kind of sculpture and stage setting and real mise en scène. So it's much more than a fashion show. But the particular thing that I thought was really interesting was even with the invitation card, which was of a, a little boy with a remote control, as if he was uh, controlling an airplane. And you got that and wondered what it meant. It was a bit mysterious. And then the way the narrative sort of unfolded in. Uh, the show, it became very clear uh, that, that illusion. So it's like you're always you've got this kind of central um, quite elusive, quite poetic um, referential uh, idea and I guess those ideas are always looking to take root in different places and to be manifest in different ways. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that, I mean, I, let's say that I, I, I work like um, um, a film director, let's say, who where the ingredients are also the piece itself, and the ingredients are to be used. And I guess that's the difference. So it's not a film, uh, you know, a director would want you to see his film only. In our case, you can also use those objects, or you can hang them on your wall. And I find that really exciting, because it's sort of a new language, let's say. So it's, there's that kind of duality, again, of, uh, let's say, the narrative, but then also objects that you can physically either wear or hang or, or you know, display in whichever way you want. So I guess, uh, I mean, it's that thing of uh, that fantasy and reality as well. I think that a lot of what I do is lies in between. And um, yeah, and I, and I enjoy th that sort of uh, duality. Well, since we're talking about uh, objects and reality, can you buy them? Sorry? Can you buy it? Of course. Who collects your work? What sort of person? Um, well, we have museums that have collected our work and have commissioned us as well in the past. We have individuals, um, all sorts, um, from like um, the Met Museum in New York to the, the Modern Museum in Luxembourg to, um, to the Musée Moderne in Stockholm. It, it's really varied. And then there's individuals who are collectors. And this has happened for years, and I think I must be the only designer who who can sell a piece to a collector and put that money back into his collection. Mm. So I think it's a really unusual situation. And, um, and what do they buy? What, what's, what's, they buy what's limited editions hits? of films, or they buy 
a piece that would have appeared in a film, like a sculpture or a dress, mm -hmm. um, or, um, for, or a photograph that um, I may have done. Um, it really depends. And do you talk? I'll bet it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and and um, does it matter to you what they think it is? I mean, it, it, you know, you, you, let's not labour this debate. It's very well documented about art and fashion. Do, does it matter to you? Uh, if they understand or how, what they well, think. Well, if they share or, your opinion of what it is, yeah. No, it doesn't matter as long as they get some excitement out of it or they have some reaction to it. It could be even negative. Um, but I think it's not, they're not going to buy it if it's negative. But surely, I mean, if, if uh, I think any reaction to something is valid, I mean, if you're indifferent to something, that, and that's worrying. Hmm. Um, I think it's not, um, I think your intention and what you want to kind of explore is, is um, you can't expect everyone to feel the same. I mean, that's, you know, just doesn't happen. And I think, um, really, I do what I'm excited by. I mean, if anyone that does something creative, I think they kind of really do what excites them because they're trying, I'm also exploring through my work. I'm learning about stuff through my work. And in a way, they're part exploratory and they're part, like, let's say, proposals on how you can look at something. And, you know, it's really in that space in between. So, and while you're doing that, you're producing the work. And then if the work has some kind of, you know, value, uh, aesthetic value or, or cultural value or whatever you want to call it, then it can go further. Well, you're quite a rare bird, aren't you, in that you have, uh, you know, people understand the discrete aspects of your career whilst understanding that they lock together conceptually. But I, what I wanted to ask you was a little bit about, on the fashion design side, do you think it's, there's such a thing as a curator's fashion designer? I, I think very mm -hmm, there is. carefully about a kind of very particular body of practitioners that were maybe starting at the, start at the same time as you when you know East End property was cheap and they were all in the same space and they were you know they came out of kind of cultural studies trained art um, fashion design courses where they were as interested in ideas and literature as they were about rouleau seams or whatever and you know they, they're in very similar types of exhibitions etc um, and I just wonder what you think about that and there whether it does them any favours. What, doesn't it what, what works for them and what doesn't? Is it good to be a curator's designer or is it not? Um, I think um, it has this, well, it depends on if you want to have cultural success yeah. or if you want to have commercial success. Yeah. I think that um, in our case, you know, we have a, a you know, relatively, you know, good sized business, but, you know, we're not a big company. Uh, but I think that, um, you know, my reasons for going into this haven't on only been for that. It's been mostly because I love ideas. And um, I think that, uh, you know, if I was completely, you know, let's say commerce driven, I mm. would have taken a different route. Mm. Um, so I think that for me, um, you know, I belong to sort of a, a fashion discourse, but I think I also belong to a design dash art discourse, but in a very, new, it's an emerging language, really, mm. because I think that there are lots of, um, like, architects and designers also, um, you know, people like Mark Newson and who are also getting gallery kind of, uh, you know, who are, who are participating in that sort of, on that, on that level, let's say. Mm. But I think it's an emerging kind of um, uh, world, and... I think, um, I don't know, it's, I think it's quite exciting. I don't know how, how it will be, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I think being, a, um, like you said, a, a curator's designer, for me, it's, it's a gain in the sense that I think I can have that cult exchange, but maybe it's a hindrance in the sense that people might think of what my practical stuff as, let's say, being um, not super wearable. Yes. And I think that's, that's such a pity because really the whole thing for us has always been about the two together. That you can actually use something. I find the idea of being able to use a good idea, I just find it really exciting that it's not only to be shown on a wall, but also something you can use. So I think... Um, I can't pick up on that. That's a really yeah. interesting, uh, that's the kind of classic distinction between the designer and the artist. Somehow the designer is about usability yeah. uh, and the artist is about something much more abstract. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, I guess, you know, obviously, you can wear a dress, you can sit on a chair, 
but there's a case where you can use art.